Good evening and welcome to the Business Day. I'm Andrew Laidley. There was heightened frustration on, among truckers at the Kingston Freeport Terminal today as long lines and lengthy delays made it difficult to clear containers. The truckers are again complaining about slow vetting and malfunctioning equipment. Deja vu. The scene on Marcus Garvey Drive early Tuesday morning as scores of truckers waited to enter the port. It's a situation the truckers have become all too familiar with. One trucker told the business day that he's been forced to operate like this for the past two weeks, but things got worse today. They promised us that the turnaround time should be um, approximately no longer than 15, 20 minutes to come in, process the documents, and then get load and come out. And how long was it today? All day, I'm, I'm in the line from, from 9 o'clock this morning. The line starts from on the toll going to Portmore to come inside the port. The delay has also affected businesses which were unable to fulfill their obligations to clients, resulting in lost revenue. The delays also incur additional costs. I am in the war from yesterday and I didn't get loan all because of the system went down. So the customer of the went again today and pay up additional charge like the war storage and the demorage for the shipping line and they will have to accept none of those responsibility. And that is not fair for the customer and, and not also with the trucker because we cannot get the job done to move on to our next job. The business day understands that the system wasn't operational until about 2 p.m. A meeting is to be held tomorrow with the operators of Kingston Freeport Terminal and the Port Trailer Haulage Association to resolve the problems. In the meantime, General Manager of the Association, Ricardo Valentine, says the members are frustrated. At 11 o'clock, between ourselves, the Port Authority and the terminal, to include also customs, we're hoping that we can come to some solution because as it is right now, the frustration level is pretty high and certainly a lot of the drivers are so incensed that they feel like, boy, this industry is something that needs to exist. And of course, if that happens, the entire sector will, of course, be affected and our country ultimately will be affected because the freight is not going to be moved fast enough for the production and distribution line. The Bank of Jamaica BOJ is defending its proposal to amend fines and penalties imposed on remittance companies and cambios for breaches. Breaches in relation to operating an unlicensed money service operation currently attract a fine ranging from fifty to $100,000. For breaches relating to a licensed money service provider or Cambio doing business with an unlicensed provider, the penalties range from $5,000 to $10,000. The central bank says the fines are too low. The bank is suggesting that all penalties start at seven figures in order to be stronger deterrents. Currency trading ended today with the U.S. dollar selling for $146.71. The Canadian dollar sold for $112.25. The pound is going for $192.16, while the euro closed at $176.23. The JC index gained 1,741 points today, while the junior market index lost 3 points. Among the winners were... Sterling Investments U.S. Dollar Shares, ISP Finance Services, JPS Co. 9.5%, G West, and MPC Caribbean Clean Energy. On the losing side were Palace Amusement, First Rock Capital Holdings U.S. Dollar Shares, Kingston Properties, Dolphin Cove, and Siboney Group. And that's the Business Day. I'm Andrew Laidley. Good evening.